This is one of the most important videos and in this video we are going to have a look at methods in Java. Methods as you might have heard are called functions in C, C++ and they are referred to procedures in some other languages but in Java these are called as methods. So our agenda consists of understanding these methods then understanding why do we need methods then we'll get have some fun we'll create our own methods and then we'll have a look at how to return values from these methods but before that forget about methods let's start with your daily schedule what is the first thing that you do in the morning come on start listing so first of all you wake up don't worry about why we are doing this just just play along you wake up then you brush your teeth then you take a shower and then you eat your breakfast then you go to your work college school whatever and there you work you study you have your office hours work hours then in the lunch time you have lunch then again work then you travel back home and at home you take some rest listen to some music talk to some family friends then you have dinner then maybe in the night you read a book and you fall asleep so let's call this our daily routine and let us try and list those things so these are all the things listed but don't you think the list is too long don't you think that some of the things which we have mentioned here can be grouped and called something small so let us do exactly that let us so this is our whole list let us shorten this list up so here we go just have a look so we have we have we have our daily routine method which we had earlier in which so these were the four items which we had wake, waking up brushing teeth taking shower and eating breakfast so these are now part of morning chores like daily routine we created something as morning chores and these four things are now a part of morning chores then the next thing was traveling so we are saying that you are traveling from home to your work so this is what this statement means don't worry if you are not getting the syntax right now just consider that your daily routine starts from the open bracket to the close bracket and this open and close parentheses are a part of the syntax so we already saw morning chores then we are seeing traveling from home to work then we have then we have our work hours where considering in this example that you are a student you attend lectures you have lunch during break you attend more lectures then again you travel but this time from work to home so we have this travel from work to home and the last part as we saw was the relaxed part in which you say listen to music talk to friends dinner then sleep so what we did we broke our list of activities and group them so we had a list of many activities and now we have morning chores which again consists of activities but our daily routine is now simple we have morning chores we have travel from home to work we have work we have travel from work to home then we have relax now what what exactly happened so we took certain activities we grouped them but we what actually we did we created a method so so method is nothing but a collection of statements performing an operation or several of them 
and uh, for example our morning chores method it consisted of four to five activities which had like waking up then brushing teeth etc so it's a collection of statements performing an operation the important question here is why do we need methods so recall the tra travel method we had created so in our first instance we were traveling from home to work then in the second instance we were traveling from work to home now notice that the activity is same the activity is same that you are basically traveling so just ignore this spelling the activity is same that you are traveling but in the first case you are traveling from home to work in the second case you are traveling from work to home so the only difference is the start and the destination so methods kind of have same set of statements and they cater to different scenarios so they help us model to the real world and also saves a lot of redundant code so when we have our travel method we don't need to define another travel method when you are traveling from work to home we only have to specify that the initial destination and the final destination in the first case the initial destination is home and the final destination is work in the second case the initial destination is work and the final destination is home now have a look at your first method what the method does is the method add two numbers those two numbers may be anything it basically takes two numbers and it prints the sum of those two numbers now let us actually see each and every element of the method this public here this is your access modifier as of now you don't need to worry about it but access modifier kind of defines the way other things may be able to access your method so when you'll study classes and objects you'll have a more clearer about idea about it but as of now just assume that it is basically how your method is accessed whether it is publicly available or it is private to a certain class or it has the default values the next thing is return type this method is printing something but is the method returning it so this is the part where you specify the return type so if the method is returning an integer you specify int here if it is returning a double valued number you specify double here but in this case it is just printing something it is just taking two numbers and it is printing it so it is not returning anything so when the method is not returning anything then the return type is void now coming to the coolest part of the method is the name of the method so we have named our method add two numbers so this is the name of the method next are the parameters so this method is or the arguments these are also called arguments so this method is taking basically two numbers two integers to be precise num1 and num2 so these are the arguments or the parameters of the method this is what you have to supply to the method and it may or may not return something but it will do something with what you have supplied so you supplied two numbers and it is printing the sum of those two numbers and as you might have guessed this part here is basically the body of the method this is the main part where 
the method performs its action so it took two numbers it took two arguments or parameters as we discussed and it did something to it so what that something is will be specified in the body whatever it will do will come in the body now a little while back we saw something called as return and we saw that we were returning void basically we were not returning anything so the methods were performing something but now we want them to return something and where do they return something method is called from somewhere and in our case we are calling a method from main remember public static void main so even that's a method so now what we discussed previously that method how a method is declared so method this public here is the access modifier don't worry about the static part we'll discuss that later void here is the return type main here is the name of the method and these are the parameters or arguments of the method so our main which we have been using since the first video to create a hello world program is basically a method so we will be calling a method from this main method and when the method executes and performs its action and it returns something those return values are returned to the method they were called from and in our case that's the main method let us now try to create the method our method is called minor or adult what it does it is that it takes the age and returns a string so remember this part it basically returns something it returns a string okay whether the person with the given age is a minor or an adult let's now write a method but before that we need to answer a few questions that what is the return type as we saw that it basically returns a string so the return type is string what are the parameters we have got one parameter that is the age and age is always an integer so say int age is the parameter what is the name of the method we can call it anything we can call it age we can call it adult finder or anything in our case we are calling it minor or adult so we have answered these three questions let us now see how our method will look like so this is our method this is our access modifier this is the return type it's basically returning a string this is the name of the method and this is the parameter here what we have here we have the body where the actual action will be done so what is happening is it is checking whether the age is greater than or equal to 18 if it is greater than or equal to 18 it is basically returning the string adult so consider so have a look at this return is return with using the return keyword and whatever you have to return comes next as soon as the compiler reads the statement during run time it basically exits from the method to the me to the calling method so when you return something the value is returned to the calling method so if age is greater than equal to 18 adult will be returned else minor will be returned where will it be returned will again have a look we know from the main method but let's have a look that how it will be returned now this is the part where things start to get sexy this is our main method we defined a variable a with the value 34 it's an integer now we are calling the method minor or adult so and we are passing the value a as soon as this method is called from this line the method is invoked 
and now the execution here will be stopped and the execution will go to the method the method will start executing and until and unless the method will and when the method is finished or when method returns something it will come back here so the method will return a string if the age is if you are passing 34 as the age it will return the string adult and this string will come here and it will be stored in our local variable result so we got a string in return adult and that will be stored this reference variable result will be pointing to that string and we can just print out the result so again we'll go through two of the concepts one was the void keyword in this example we did not use void because it was returning something remember that when a method does not return something like our first method which was to add two numbers when it is not returning something then the return type is void and method invocation so the program control so when main was being executed when whenever the function is invoked the program control goes to the function and this is executed then once the execution is completed then the program control comes back to say main considering this was your main and this was your method so whenever the program control is at main and it say the method is invoked the program control goes to the method the method is executed and then when it is executed it returns a value then the program control comes back to main so let us summarize what we learnt methods are basically collection of statements and they perform some action they consist of the name return type access modifier parameters and the most important part the body and methods can return values and can return nothing in which the case type is void and remember when a method is called the program control is passed from the method from where it is called to the method which is invoked and when that method stops executing or return something then the program control goes back to the method from which it was called